Now, I know you said that you focus primarily on, on basketball, but when you were starting to pepper in volleyball and, you know, get more into it, was there a natural interest for volleyball? Did you ever imagine that that would be or turn into your primary sport? Oh gosh. At that time, no, at that time, for sure. No. Um, I was all about basketball. I had some success at a young age playing basketball. You know, I was playing with Taylor Crabb, Henry Cassidy. I don't know if you remember who that was. Mm-hmm. He was all American Libro at, at USC. Mm-hmm. Henry Cassidy. Um, my kind of club team that I grew up with was the Hawaii Warriors. Mm-hmm. And we basically won everything that you could at, in on the island. Our team was made up of probably half the all-state team in in uh in high school so we were we were quite successful and we stayed together we were kind of a core for a long time Trevin Tulungari, Kaino Ashir, kind of the list goes on and Andrew Skolman gosh I, I'm just remembering now kind of our our team was was stacked yeah, yeah. and so that was you know success kind of encourages coming back for more yeah. right so it was a lot of fun growing up playing playing basketball with a core group of guys that you started with when you're eight, nine years old and what, you know, stayed with all the way through high school. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was my experience for basketball quite a bit. And volleyball crept in, in the later years. Um, When I started playing club at 13, I was, I had some success just being around volleyball a little bit, gave me a little bit more of an edge um, for those, you know, for some of my peers, and I was one of the taller guys in mm-hmm. Hawaii. As we know, Hawaii is not vertically uh, blessed, <laughs> yes. Yes. as we can we might say. So I was one of the taller players um, on my team always. And so I started playing club, and I was always outside hitter, right? Because taller mm-hmm. guys you usually put there. And I had some good ball control, so I, I did that. And then my fir- one of my first coaches was Larry Tuileta, Tui's dad. Got it. And it was Tui's team. And he goes, you're going to be our setter. I was like, coach, come (laughs) on. What are we talking about here? I don't want to be a setter. Like, I want to, I want to be, I want to kill the ball. I want to make points, you know? I want to score all the points. And he was like, no, 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 trust me. You're going to be our setter. Like, you understand the game or or we want you controlling the ball, this and that. And I was like young and naive. And I was just like, no, come on. Like, I was bummed. (laughs) What age was that? It's 13, actually, 13 oh, or 14. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I started playing setter and, you know, kind of like a 6'2". When you're, when you're growing up, you mm-hmm. younger age, not really hitting back row, not really attacking the balls from the back row. Mm-hmm. So, so I was able to hit in the front row and set in the back row. And that, that um, experience, I think, helped me a whole lot, um, even now, just to – understand attacking the ball a little bit more as a, yep. as an attacker, but also having that perspective as a setter, I think is, is super valuable. Then I started to have a little more success in volleyball. I was encouraged to try out for the USA high performance team, which is kind of their pipeline to, you know, what mm-hmm. they say is pipeline to the national team, right. Mm-hmm. Which is um, a long shot, but it's still, it's that, it's that pipeline system. And so I was super nervous, super scared to go try out. And then who was it? It was Tino Reyes encouraged me to do that. Tino Reyes, you know, old uh, assistant for UH men's volleyball team, father of Jalen Reyes, who is now coaching collegiately for the girls. And so I tried out and I made the team and I made like the select A1 team, right? Which was one, one of the highest teams you could be on. And so then kind of a light bulb switched a little bit and was like, maybe this volleyball thing can be an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then the next year I made the youth national team where it was like either 18 or 19 and under. Okay. And I was 16. Got it. And it was world championships. And this was, um, let me name some names on this team. It was Taylor Crabb, Taylor Sander, Josh Taylor, Maurice Torres, Henry Cassidy. So it was like a guys that had very successful collegiate careers as well and also professional careers. And so I was, I was able to compete with them and I was starting with them and going to the world championships. And I ended up being probably 
the actually I was told I was the youngest American ever to compete at a world championships. Got it. At 16 years old. And so, I mean, I mean, it's a 19 and under champion world championship, right? It's not yeah. super great. It's not the national team, mm -hmm. but it was a little idea, a little, a little spark of like, Oh, maybe this volleyball thing can be, it'd be a career rather than a second sport yeah. that is, you know, tailing basketball a little bit. That's crazy to hear. And so all of this success was kind of early on because like you said, you didn't play club until 13, 13 years mm -hmm. old. And then you think about it, just two, three years in the mix, you're competing at the world championships, right? And you're starting and you're the youngest player there to compete, compete for the US. So all of this kind of happened so fast. Now, if you look back on it, what do you think helped a lot of that success, especially early on in high school? Well, I think... I'd be remiss not to credit uh, my coaches, you know, Coach Larry Tuileta, um, Tino Reyes, Charlie mm -hmm. Jenkins. Gosh, I played for Mike Among a little bit. And just I was able to kind of soak up a lot of volleyball knowledge from a lot of mm -hmm. veterans of the game, let's say, and learn from a lot of the greats. And I was also able to compete at a, an age level and a, and honestly, a skill level that was greater than mine. So it was a little bit of a sink or swim opportunity and take your lumps, mm -hmm. but find a way to compete and find a way to almost exist on the court and mm -hmm. earn your spot rather than, okay, this is a little bit above my pay grade. Let me go down and play with my own age group. Mm -hmm. It was okay, I'm not as athletic as these guys. They're a little more physically mature, but there's different ways that you can survive and even thrive on the court. And so that helped me develop there when I was able to play kind of with Hawaii people in general, at least when I was growing up, it was like, you go to the mainland, it's like big dudes. Yes. And like normally, normally a little bit more physically mature than you as well. Like, mm -hmm even developing a little quicker. Mm -hmm. So I, like, I definitely don't jump as high as these guys. <laughs> I definitely uh, am not as tall as these guys. So I have to figure out different ways that I can succeed. And so I think that was a huge learning experience for me that, you know, obviously contributes to where I am now, but it also allowed me to come back to high school volleyball, like we were talking about earlier and apply different, techniques that I didn't necessarily need to in high school because I was now, now I became the tallest guy yes. and one of the more athletic guys. So then it allowed me to be a little bit more complete of a player mm -hmm. while still having some um, advantageous physical attributes. Yes. But I played outside hitter when I was in Hawaii throughout my oh, got high it. school. Got through it. High school, I played outside hitter. So only when you were playing with the national team, that's when you were setting and, national team and club I was setting and then high school I was outside hitter got which it which I loved I was, I was stoked <laughs> yeah that'll give you your little fix so that you get you know you get all of the fun you don't have to be the one delivering the assist yes mm -hmm.